Traditionally, the Lego Group has been seen as a Western brand. In addition to being founded in Billund, Denmark, the company has enjoyed a plethora of success in countries all throughout Europe, as well as overseas in the United States. However, up until recently, the Lego Group had been hesitant to expand east. But over the last five or so years, that's all changed with the LEGO Group's rapid expansion into China. Today we'll answer the important question, how has LEGO taken over the Chinese toy market? And more importantly, why? Before we can discuss LEGO's rapid expansion into China, it's crucial that we take a moment to figure out why it took LEGO so long to set up shop in the world's most populated country. Ultimately, it was the taxes that China imposed on imported toys that thwarted LEGO's takeover, as these import taxes prevented the LEGO group from establishing a set retail price in the region. In turn, this led to fluctuating prices for LEGO, which made them a luxury item throughout the 1990s. Eventually, these prices resulted in companies creating bootleg LEGO sets, which they sold for lower prices. China's weak intellectual property laws are what allowed companies like Lepin, LEGO's greatest adversary, to take off. LEGO finally defeated Lepin in 2018, and the historic case has seen a massive reduction in LEGO bootlegs, a problem that had plagued LEGO for over 20 years, with various Chinese companies itching to steal LEGO's set designs. That historic case, along with China's removal of the one-child policy in 2015 and its growing consumer spending, all provided LEGO with a perfect opportunity to expand operations into the Chinese toy market. These reasons and the fact that there are over 200 million children in China is why LEGO is rapidly expanding there. Through their investment in infrastructure, creation of sets and themes that target the Chinese demographic, and last but not least, their different approach to what it means to play well in China. Investing in infrastructure has been a massive key to LEGO's success in China. In 2016, LEGO opened a factory in Jiaxing, which boasts over 1,200 employees and provides LEGO products to not only China, but the rest of Asia. The company announced at the beginning of 2022 that the six-year-old factory will already be getting an addition, as 450,000 square feet will be added on to the factory. This factory is crucial to LEGO's success, as it gets them around China's import taxes, and also provides them a central base of operation and manufacturing for the East. In addition, LEGO has heavily invested into the creation of LEGO stores. At the beginning of 2018, there were only 10 LEGO stores in China, and today there are over 300. What's even more impressive is that LEGO was able to open hundreds of stores throughout the pandemic, as the coronavirus did not derail the company one bit from setting up shops all throughout China. In 2020, LEGO opened 91 retail locations in China. In the first 10 months of 2021 alone, LEGO created 70 new stores, along with the largest LEGO flagship store. And while we don't have any information on the final numbers for 2022, we do know that LEGO had already opened 46 stores in China by July, and that their goal was to end the year with a total of 80 new stores established in China. In addition, the LEGO Group has also taken over the Chinese toy market with the creation of sets and themes which target the Chinese demographic. The Chinese New Year sets that appear every year are perfect examples of LEGO catering to its growing Chinese demographic, along with Monkey Kid, an unlicensed LEGO theme which appears to be slowly but surely turning into an evergreen theme. Monkey Kid was specifically created for LEGO fans in China, and since the theme appeared on shelves in 2020, it has already had three seasons of its own TV show. The theme is inspired by Monkey King, a legendary mythical figure from the 16th century Chinese novel Journey to the West, which is regarded as one of the greatest classic Chinese novels. While this theme is not exclusive to China, it is important to recognize the fact that it does center around a famous Chinese story. As Monkey Kid's status as a theme that caters to Chinese fans, and its rollout that was benefited by the creation of hundreds of new stores in China was by no means an accident. Last but not least, LEGO has been able to make their mark on the Chinese toy market through the different approach they take in China when it comes to marketing, branding, store layout, and really all things LEGO. For example, LEGO has invested a lot of money into LEGO education resources in an effort to show Chinese consumers 
the multitude of benefits that LEGO provides. Here in the West, LEGO has been used in classroom settings for decades now, and the company wishes to pass that element of LEGO along to their Chinese customers as well. In addition, the company is interested in creating some sort of virtual reality game or video game in general to attract Chinese consumers to the brand. LEGO Cube, a project currently in limbo that was specifically created for the Chinese market, is one example of this. But regardless of its status, LEGO will be back in the future with more video games or interactive forms of media for their Chinese fans. Lastly, while I'm not sure if the hundreds of stores opened since 2018 share this characteristic, I do know that the original LEGO stores in China were much more centered around LEGO play areas, with some stores dedicating up to two-thirds of their floor space for these play areas to allow children to experience the bricks before their parents buy them. While stores here in the States also have these play places, they don't take up the majority of the store. As it's my understanding that in general, Chinese consumers prefer to see the toy in action before making a purchase. Overall, I'm excited to see how LEGO's rapid expansion into China plays out. The brand is taking a huge risk with all the moves they've made. The creation of new themes, construction of hundreds of new stores, and unique approach with branding and marketing all reveal that LEGO is not leaving any stone unturned. So what do you think comes next? Will these moves help or hurt LEGO? Will LEGO start to invest in other untapped markets like India? Is there something sketchy going on with LEGO and the Chinese government behind the scenes that has allowed LEGO to make these moves with relative ease? Let me know in the comment section down below and I'll see you next week.